All right, today we're gonna to be tying the uh, gurgler. Start off a little bit different hook this time. Uh, we're gonna tie this on a SC1520. Uh, if you don't wanna tie on a um, wider gap hook like this, you could always use a number two uh, Daiichi 2546, even a size one Daiichi 2546. Uh, the reason we're going with this hook today is because this gurgler is going to be mainly thrown for juvenile tarpon, uh, some larger snooks, so we want a little bit sharper of a hook point, a little bit stronger of a hook, better hook up ratio with this wider gap hook. We're going to start by just getting our thread started and working it to the back of the hook here. Work down the bend just a little ways. And we can go ahead and cut that off. First material we're gonna tie in is this medium Palmer chenille in orange, or um, sorry, medium cactus chenille in orange. Uh, you can tie this in orange, red, pink, anything that just kind of looks like a little egg sac, gills, it's just a little, uh, just a little attractor piece for this pattern. Uh, not a hundred percent necessary. So if you don't want to actually add this part, you don't have to. But it's always nice just to give the fly a little bit something more. And what we're gonna do here is just palmer this around the hook shank, just trying to go one right after the other, just to make it look like that little egg sac or uh, pair of gills. Kind of move some of these back as you palm her forward. And we're just going to try to cover up the full bend part of this hook until we start straightening out on the shank. Maybe one or two more here. Let's get one more in there. All right, move our thread back. We'll go ahead and tie this in. that nice and secure try to stroke everything back as best we can all right and we can cut our axis out all right now that we're at the back of the hook here we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some Homemade eyes. I make these eyes uh, just like you see most of the homemade eyes um, on YouTube. You just take a little bit of loom thick, put it on the end of some monofilament, kind of spin it in your fingers until you get a little ball and hit it with the UV light. And then to get this gold color, you just want to take some more UV resin and mix some fine glitter into it and then just roll that little ball that you already made into the fine glitter. And you'll get these nice little golden eyes. You can, uh, you can use red, green, whatever color you like. I think the gold just looks really good with this uh, black and purple combination. So we're gonna add that. We want these eyes just to stick out just behind our egg sac. You can make them longer. Uh, I typically like to try to keep them as short as possible because if you make them too long, they do have a tendency to foul around the hook. Um, even if you use some thicker uh, monofilament, uh, some thicker Mason hard mono, even you know 40 or 50 pound, still foul. So you just want to try to keep them short. Again, they're they're not a necessary part of this fly, but it's just a little attractor piece it just adds a little something some would say it's just there to make the fly look prettier in your fly box so when your buddies look at your fly box they uh they think you know what you're doing that might be true a little bit but i'd rather have some good looking flies in my fly box than some ugly flies so go ahead we'll trim this tag end out of there and we're just going to give the inside wrap here three or four on each side. All this is doing is just kind of spreading the eyes out from the uh, egg sac a little bit. 
You can see, you know, we got a little bit of a spread going now. Uh, do a couple wraps going here on top. And kind of straighten those out some. All right, the next material that we're gonna use is craft fur. And just for the interest of time, I've already gone ahead and cut out my two sections of black and purple craft fur and combed them out and everything. So all you're doing is you're just cutting out uh, four or five clumps of each color, uh, stacking them on top of each other and then just combing out all the butt sections. So you just get all the butts out as best you can. And then just taking the ends here and just pulling the ends until you got the two colors lined up, pretty even, nice little manageable amount of um, craft fur, or pseudo hair, or whatever type of uh, fur you want to use here at the end. So we're just going to measure, see how much we want off the back. Usually about, you know, one or two times the hook length works pretty well. So we'll just cut our butts off here so we don't have to do it later on. And we'll just come through. The thread's coming apart on me here. That's not good, come on. Got some slippery stuff today. There we go. You want to just get a loose wrap to start and then just kind of work your way into making it in a little bit tighter of wraps. Try to just make sure you keep the black on top and purple on bottom or whatever color combination you're using. Just get some nice tight wraps in there on it. Don't worry about putting too many wraps here. You know, you're really just trying to make sure that you are uh, got everything lashed down good. And I mean, we're gonna cover all this up here in a minute anyway, so. We're gonna take a little bit of this uh, Loctite gel. I like this just cause it, it soaks down in the fibers. So it gets your eyes and your uh, tail here to stay in place real well. I'll just put a little dab of that on there. Again, not necessary, but we like to make durable flies. Dribble flies catch a lot of fish, so we put it there. And we'll just put a couple of thread wraps on there, trying to cover up some of that super glue. Now if you want, if you were tying this in a different color, maybe if you make the tail all uh, purple, you could take a marker and, and add bars, but with this uh, black and purple pattern today, we're not gonna go ahead and add any bars to this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this uh, black minnow head brush from EP. This is gonna be the collar to our fly. You could make your collar out of just about anything that you really wanted to. The reason I like this EP minnow brush for this collar is it's got this uh, kind of this bluish purple flash built into it and red flash built into it. So I don't have to worry about using a couple different materials so that I can build my flash in. Uh, another good brush to use is the EP Foxy brush. Works really well for this is for this fly. So you just want to make sure you're not using a brush that's too long to where it's gonna completely cover the eyes, or too short to where it's not really reaching the back of the hook and covering up as much as you want it to. So get our thread out of the way here, and the next thing we need is our there it is. Our hackle pliers. And all we're gonna do is just slowly go around. Fingers are sticking to that still. And we're just gonna palmer our minnow head brush in there. And we're only gonna do maybe three or four wraps of this minnow head brush. Just take your time, just kinda stroke the fibers back, let it cover as much of the uh, thread wraps as you had on there before as you can. So we'll do two on top, and we'll say two on the bottom here. You don't want to add a ton of this because uh, it's already pretty thick stuff. So if you start adding too much, you're going to add a lot of weight to the fly. You're going to add uh, not really enough room for your body either. So we'll go ahead, we'll take 
Just kind of separate this material. And just kind of tie it here going forward. Just trying to get it out of the way so when I go to cut this, I don't cut my thread because I always lose my thread when I try cutting this. Let's get our bad pair of scissors and get right up in there close. Cut it off. So then we can just come in with our botkin, just kind of pick out some of these fibers, any anything that got loose or trapped or uh, caught in the, you know, if that glue wasn't completely dry yet, you just come in and pick it right out. And then just kind of stroke all those back. And you just want to wrap back on that minnow head brush as best you can. Get that minnow brush kind of just laying backwards for you. So now it should, it should start to take on a little bit of a shrimpy look for you here, with the eyes and all that. I'm, I'm sure you could probably fish that fly as is and, and probably catch some fish. So next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna advance our thread up here to the front of the hook. And of course we broke our thread. And that's what we get for using 140 denier, not 210, but it's all right. All we're gonna do is just wrap back on it and cut that right out. And now you barely even know we made the mistake. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our two millimeter foam. I took uh, two, mil two millimeter black foam and two millimeter purple foam and glued them together. Um, I have had a couple people ask me online how I do this. Uh, all you're doing is you're gonna go and buy Gorilla Glue, Gorilla Glue Spray. Uh, it's an adhesive spray uh, specifically made for foam products. And you just spray each color of foam on one side and make sure you cover the entire bit of foam with the spray. And then you're gonna put the two pieces together and then take like a heavy book and put it on top of them just so they uh, get mashed down together. Leave it that way for maybe 15 minutes and they should be adhered to where, to where you're just not gonna be able to pull them apart. And then I like to take a paper cutter and cut these into half inch sections. So this is about a half inch. It's about the perfect size for this. You can see it's right about the size of the gap of the hook. Uh, you really don't wanna to go too much bigger than the gap of the hook. If anything, you'd rather be smaller if you have the choice. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make a little notch on one side, just as a little tie in point. And we're gonna tie with the purple, purple side up. Just get this front piece tied down first. We're gonna kind of fold it around the hook a little bit, and just kind of get it so we can tie it in a little easier so it'll kind of surround the whole hook. How you tie the foam in isn't, isn't a big deal. I mean, just as long as you get the foam on there and you have plenty of foam to support your hook. So, I mean, we have, essentially four millimeters of foam on here, it's gonna float this hook perfectly. Um, if you're the kind of guy on there who has to tie tarpon flies on, say a Tiemco SP600, you're probably gonna notice that even this much foam is still gonna partially sink your fly, and that's just not what you want. I mean, this is a top water fly. If it's underwater, it's not really doing you any good. All right, and then for the rest of the body, we're just gonna add more cac more medium cactus chenille. We got some purple right here. Um, could use red, I'm just out of red right now, so we're gonna go with the purple. Uh, but red, red looks great for doing this part if you're doing the black and purple color scheme. So we're just gonna cut off a generous portion of this medium cactus chenille. Just kind of tie it in going forward, just making sure we got that lash down good enough. And we'll get our thread going right here in front of where we tied the foam in. 
Then we just Palmer, our medium cactus chenille, just kind of stroking back on every wrap. Just try to make sure you cover, make this, this piece as thick as you can. Uh, you can use other materials. You can use an EP tarantula brush. You can use all kinds of little brushes that they make. I, I personally prefer the uh, cactus chenille because it's not gonna hold water at all. It's got flash built into it, you know. And it's, it's a pretty good size for, for making these girdler bodies. So we got up here right about right in front of where we tied that foam in. We're just gonna go ahead and tie off this cactus chenille. Go to the eye, work back on itself. And I'll just cut that out of there. Now if you wanted to, the advantage to using a hook like the Daiichi 2546 is you'll have a little bit longer of a section up here to work with. So you can make that section of uh, body a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. So cut a little bit of this extra out of here. All right. The next thing we're gonna do is just fold over our foam, fold to the front, and then just push back a little bit on it, just so we make a nice little airway there. And just get our foam over two loose wraps. And you wanna to try to get this as far back as you can, just give you a little space here at the front. You know, right where you tied that foam in originally is about where you wanna get it. So, and just come down tight, and you'll have this little shape formed. And all you're gonna do is just take your finger, punch this back, and then just tie right under the foam. And you're gonna add a whole bunch of wraps under here. So, trying to get as far back with your wraps as possible. The further back you get with your wraps, the more you're gonna prop up this little piece of foam here in the front, which is gonna help you make that little pop. So, just go ahead and just get a whole bunch of wraps in under here. All right, once that's propped up, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna try to cut this off right even, maybe a slightly higher than the top of this little ridge here. You can make it higher or shorter, however you want, but I typically try to make it right about the same size. And then we're just gonna take our whip finish tool. We're gonna whip finish right over where we tied this in. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to tie in a weed guard, you could have tied it in before you tied this step in, but since this is gonna be for tarpon, we're not gonna put a weed guard on it. Now we're gonna flip the fly over. We're gonna take some loon thin, and we're just gonna cover up our thread wraps with some loon thin. And I don't have my light with me. Got it. All right, had to go hunt down my light, but we got my light. So we got our loon thin on there. We're just gonna go ahead and hit that with our light. That get good and cured. Flip or fly back over and you could fish it just like this. It's gonna work really well. What I like to do is just add a little bit more durability, get our Loctite again. Now I'm just gonna put it right here behind the head. And then I'm just gonna push the head and body together. And this really just helps with the durability of the head. Uh, you already have those thread wraps kind of binding down on it. So you notice if any of this fly starts to fall apart on you, the first thing that's gonna fall apart normally is this foam body. And this little bit of extra glue here really, really helps on that part so and it makes a nice little nice little pop as well and that's it that's the uh, gurgler so this one's gonna be thrown to uh, tarpon probably this coming weekend and uh, hopefully we can snag a few and uh, get them on video to uh, show you guys how to fish these gurglers for tarpon thanks for watching and uh, if you like the video like and subscribe and uh, 
Yeah. Thank you.